everyone! So it's already been two months since Nvidia announced the new 30 series cards, powered by the Ampere architecture, and we've since seen the limited release of the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 GPUs. But today is the day we get to take a look at the RTX 3070, which is the cheapest of the new lineup so far. I have the Founders Edition card here, but before we take a look at it, let's remove this Activate Windows watermark with today's video sponsor, SCD Key. They offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, so just head over there using the link in the description down below, and if you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off. The key is delivered immediately, and then you can just search for Activate on your PC and then put the code there. Click Activate, and the watermark is gone. Now back to the video. I absolutely love the Final Edition cooler on the RTX 3080, so I'm interested to see if its little sister can live up to those same expectations. To start with, the RTX 3070 has a much more traditional fan placement, with both of its fans on this side of the card. However, it still has a very large cutout on the back plate side for air to blow straight through the heatsink and out the other side, and it still has ventilation on the PCIe bracket to exhaust heat directly out of your case. This card is quite a bit smaller than the 3080, but the 3070 does have a 220 watt TGP rating, which is 100 watts less than the 3080. It's still powered by Nvidia's new 12 pin connector, but it only needs a single 8 pin PCIe power connector to be adapted to it. In some pictures, this RTX 3070 text on the back plate looks randomly placed, but now that I can see all the detailing on the back plate, I think it works. I really like this cooler design. It definitely matches the high build quality I've come to expect from a Founders Edition card, just smaller and at a cheaper price point. Last generation we saw Founders Editions all the way down to the RTX 2060, so perhaps we'll see a 3060 or 3060 Ti with the same cooler as the 3070. Looking at the specs, the 3070 Founders Edition has 5,888 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1.5GHz and a boost of 1.73GHz, 8GB of GDDR6 memory, so not the faster GDDR6X VRAM, and this is at 7GHz with a 256-bit memory bus. It also features 46 second-generation ray tracing cores and 184 third-generation tensor cores. So let's get this into my test system and see how it performs. And the same as with my 3080 review, I'm going to be benchmarking this in my workstation PC Lotus, the full specs of which will be in the description box down below. One thing to point out now that I have the 3070 installed is that it doesn't have a backlit GeForce RTX logo. So starting on Rainbow Six Siege, this is the ultra preset, but with the resolution scaling set to 100% instead of the default 50. Here, the 2080 Ti scored an average of 133 FPS across its three benchmark runs. As for the 3070, it just about beats it with a 3.9% performance increase, so we're off to a good start. As there's been a lot of speculation on the validity of NVIDIA's faster than 2080 Ti claim. Next up is Forza Horizon 4 in Ultra Settings. Here, the 3070 pulls away from the 2080 Ti even more, with an 8% performance increase. With the 3080, the inbuilt benchmark does suggest that my 3900X may be limiting me here, with the lowest FPS being due to CPU rendering performance rather than GPU rendering. So it'd be interesting to see if the 3080 pulls away at all when I rerun this test on a 5000 series CPU. On to Far Cry New Dawn in Ultra settings. This is the first game where we see the 2080 Ti actually beat the 3070, although it is nice to see the 3070's 1% low stay above 60 FPS. All of my 2080 Ti comparisons today are quite close to the 3070's performance, but the benchmark results were all very repeatable with consistent results. Next up is Assassin's Creed Odyssey in high settings. Here we see the 3070 performs slightly better than the 2080 Ti, but really only the 3080 manages a decent experience in 4K with these particular settings. Looking at these benchmarks, the 2070 Super is looking particularly last gen, which will either be very exciting or kind of depressing depending on where you are in your upgrade cycle. Moving on to Gears of War 5 in Ultra settings, here we see the 3070 and 2080 Ti's closest result yet, but both fall slightly below the 60fps average that I'd like to see. I think people will see the 3070 as a 1440p card and the 3080 as a 4k card, but that's not how I see it. Even the 2070 Super is a 4k card in my book, it's just how many graphical compromises you have to make to get the frame rate that you want. 
Just like with the 2080 Ti, the 3070 will be a relatively easy card to make 4K work, as it is a powerful card. But the 3080 does it much more effortlessly if you can stretch your budget that far. Moving on to some ray tracing benchmarks, starting with Modern Warfare, this is in the highest settings of ray tracing on, DLSS isn't supported here. Here the 3070 performs 4.8% better than the 2080 Ti and a whole 50% better than the 2070 Super. I try to tell people that they should upgrade their GPUs every other generation rather than every single gen, but a result like this would have me looking at the 2070 Super and wondering if it's time. And if I had an original RTX 2070 non-Super, I'd be even more tempted. Next up is Control. This is with DLSS set to 1080p, outputting in 4K, with everything else maxed out including every ray tracing option. Here, the 3070 averages 66 FPS, and we're starting to see a bit of a pattern. It's beating the 2080 Ti, but not by a huge margin, this time only 3.3%. The recommended retail price for the Founders Edition cards has the 3080 costing £180 more than the 3070, and if anything, my testing so far would be persuading me to save up a little longer, or cut back elsewhere, to be able to make that jump. Moving on to Metro Exodus, this is in Ultra Settings, with Ultra Ray Tracing and DLSS on. Here's another game where the 2080 Ti beats the 3070, this time by 3.6%. What stands out to me in this benchmark is the battle for 60fps. The 3080 manages to do so with its 1% lows, whereas the 3070 just barely manages to do it with its overall average FPS with these settings. Wolfenstein Youngblood, in the highest settings of RTX on, and DLSS in its quality mode, sees the RTX 3070 regain its lead over the 2080 Ti. At this point, I'm not entirely sure what more there is to say. Like, the 3070 is great, the 3080 is amazing, and the 2070 Super is kind of meh. So finally, onto the last benchmark, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with high settings, RTX set to high, and DLSS on. Unfortunately, we're ending on a benchmark where the 2080 Ti beats the 3070, this time by 5%, which is the biggest loss so far. What's interesting here though is that the 3070 did beat the 2080 Ti on 1% lows, so the 3070 did provide a more consistent FPS during this particular benchmark. So looking at some overall comparisons, the 3070 beat the 2080 Ti in 7 of the 10 games tested today. It ranged from a 5% decrease to an 8% increase in performance, and overall averaged a 1.8% performance increase. 10 games isn't really enough here though, as a couple more titles swinging in the 2080 Ti's favour would really change the overall outlook. But I think I've seen enough to say that Nvidia's claim that the 3070 is faster than 2080 Ti is merited enough for their marketing but I'd say that similar performance does give a much more complete picture. Comparing the 3070 to the 2070 Super shows off Ampere's great generational improvements, with an average performance increase of 38%. And then lastly, comparing the 3080 to the 3070, buying a 3080 instead nets you a 28% performance increase over the 3070, but this is at a price increase of 38%. So the 3070 has a superior price performance ratio, but that's to be expected, and we're certainly not seeing anywhere close to the diminishing returns of the jump from the 3080 to the 3090. So after benchmarking 10 games in 4K, I thought about going back and adding in 1440p testing, and then maybe even some additional games, but instead I decided to have a little fun and put together a build featuring the 3070. So the goal of this build is to take the price point of the RTX 2080 Ti, and to use that price to build an entire system, which includes an RTX 3070, to show just how much things are improved over a single generation. Unfortunately though, I really didn't have very long after coming up with this idea to get in the parts, so I've had to substitute some things, and basically you'll have to excuse the exact parts and pricing of this build, but hopefully it should still give you an idea of what's possible. So starting with the CPU, the obvious choice if you're building a PC right now is Ryzen, they have the Productivity Performance Crown, and on the 5th of November, when they launch their new CPUs, which is also my birthday, uh, they're expected to take the Game Performance Crown as well. Because it's not the 5th yet though, I'm using a Sen 2 Ryzen 5 3600X, but it would probably be best to wait for either a Sen 3 CPU or the inevitable price drop of Sen 2. Either way, this build will be entirely compatible with the upcoming Sen 3 CPUs, as for the motherboard, I've come with the B550 chipset. 
So my original plan for the build was to use a B550A Aurora's Elite motherboard, which sells for roughly £140 at the moment. But here with me instead, I have the newly released Aorus Elite AX V2. It looks near identical, with the only real differences being that this has Wi-Fi 6, an internal USB-C header, an updated VRAM with no doublers, and also has a second M.2 heatsink. The non-Wi-Fi version of this board has a recommended retail price of £180, but motherboards are often sold below recommended retail price, so the difference between the Elite and the Elite V2 could be worth paying if you think you'd benefit from the upgrades. I've been using Aorus boards in all of my recent builds and I'm yet to have a single problem with one, so I have complete confidence that the Elite AX V2 will be a very solid board. Moving on to the SSD that I've chosen for the system, this is a 1TB Sabron Rocket PCIe 4.0 SSD, and I picked this up at a discounted price on sale earlier this month. The Rocket advertises speeds of up to 5000 megabytes per second read and 4400 megabytes per second write. You can save yourself some money by going with a PCIe 3.0 SSD here instead, just as long as you're not playing games off of a hard drive, then you should be good. For the cooler, I've gone with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. This has become my go-to budget cooler for when I need something better than the AMD stock cooler, but don't have the budget for something higher end. And since the aim here is for the entire build to cost around the same as the RTX 2080 Ti, this is one of the areas where compromises can be made. Especially given how easy this is to upgrade down the road, when compared to, you know, say your motherboard. Which is something you're normally stuck with until an entirely new build or a platform change comes around. So with the memory, you can now pick up a 32GB 3200MHz set for around only £100. I'm going to be using Team Group's Falcon Z memory, which is a set that I already own. And this is often the cheapest memory that you can find, especially if you live in America. But of course prices will fluctuate. So moving on to the case, I have gone with a Fantix Eclipse P300A, which has a mesh front panel unlike the restrictive non-A version. As good airflow is really important for a gaming PC, especially at the lower price points where you might not be able to afford the best cooling to overcome the limitations of a restrictive case. Another reason that I've gone with this case is because I wanted one of the more compact mid-towers out there that have done away with the large area at the front of the case where hard drives and optical bays used to reside. Those cases are still great if you're going to be custom water cooling, but I'm going to be air cooling, and the RTX 3070 is a really short card, so I didn't want a large empty space towards the front of the build that could possibly look silly. So cases like the Corsair 220T, or the Fractal Mesh of IC, or the Fantex P300A are the way to go as they bring the front fronts closer to your components and shrink the overall footprint of the build. Also, I just have to say, this case is so, like, small and adorably cute. <laughs> So this case is only £50, but it doesn't come with any front fans, so I decided to pick up two Noctua Redux fans, which brings the total price of the case plus fans to £74. I decided to go with a black case and non-LED fans, because I'm thinking this build could have sort of like a dark and stealthy theme to it. Now, for the power supply, if I'm being entirely honest, I didn't want to have to buy a 650 watt unit just for this video, especially when I have so many power supplies already. It just feels kind of wasteful. So I'm going to be using this Bit Phoenix Fury power supply for this build, which I already owned. Unfortunately though, this is end of life now, which is a shame as it came with braided cables as standard. But you can pick up a decent 650 watt power supply from a good brand for around only £80. And then additionally, you can always buy a cable extension kit for around £20 if you want to replicate this look. So finally, we can add the RTX 3070. So this is the finished build. And I have to say I'm very happy with my decision to go for compact mid-tower as everything has just come together very nicely and looks very cute. <laughs> if you go with my suggested specs, then this build would be around £1,200. But with the hardware shown though, it would come to a bit more. Still less than one of more premium 2080 Ti's out there though. So let me know in the comments down below which one you'd rather have, this entire 3070 build or a Founders Edition 2080 Ti. Although I don't know if this speaks to how good the 30 series is, or instead how bad the 20 series was. Maybe a combination of both. But either way, I'm certainly pleased to see such large technological jumps being made. So, it's finally time for me to conclude my thoughts on the RTX 3070. And that is easy to do when you compare it to the 2080 Ti. But I don't think that comparison is going to be all that relevant or useful going forward. The big problem is that tomorrow the landscape will completely change when AMD announces their competing cards. So, as of right now, I have an incomplete picture to be able to draw a conclusion from. There's also the issue of price, 
Like the 3070 is seen as a £469 card, and the 3080 is seen as a £650 card. But that's only fair if you can actually buy them at those prices. Like even before launch, decent 3070s start at around £530, and there could be a launch day price hike yet to come. The same thing will no doubt happen with AMD, with the announced price and retail price differing significantly. So there's a lot of details up in the air right now, and making a concrete recommendation is therefore almost impossible. With all that said, this is a review, so I have to ask myself, is the RTX 3070 tasty? And I do really, really like the card. So what I will say is as of the 27th of October 2020, based on the Founders Edition, priced at £469, I'd have to say that the 3070 is one tasty GPU. But ask me again tomorrow. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was my review of the Founders Edition RTX 3070. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos and haven't already, then please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much to my incredible patrons, and thank you all for watching.